atrium pump gurinchi so uh, we will go to the board and uh, let us see that that during depolarization there is an influx of sodium ion which makes the charge increase that means during this process what happened there is a movement of sodium ions that from ecf to axoplasm from the ecf to original position of the sodium ions is ecf so from the ecf to the axoplasm that particular sodium ions are moving okay so that the first thing another uh, event happened during depolarization to the repolarization from the axoplasm to the ecf from the axoplasm to the ecf that one more thing is happened what happened potassium ions are going to be entered outside so that means there is a place change sodium ions reach to the axoplasm potassium ions reach to the ecf so that back again that what is required for us sodium need to go back this is the thing which i show, i'm showing in the box potassium need to come inside that means potassium need to go for their respective place the original place so to understand this you need to understand the sodium and potassium ions in their respective places actually the sodium is there where it is actually the where it is actually let me say once again where it is actually little confusing item here so that's a let me say once again the resting state i do remember you the resting state why which we said that there is a 10 times greater in ecf sodium ions are more we find in the ecf and potassium ions are more we can see in the axoplasm more potassium ions in the axoplasm more sodium ions in the ecf so what we say during depolarization there is an influx of sodium happen and there is a efflux of potassium happen during repolarization and hyperpolarization that means there is a displacement sodium ions reached inside so they have to go back back means back means going outside back again going outside you need to understand this language that because that now i am reading the textbook for you when i read they use this language text language the sodium ions are moving outside potassium ions are moving inside so you need to understand that outside and inside language what is it actually they are present outside during depolarization due to the influx of sodium ion charge increase that means sodium ions are moved inside so where they should go back they should go back to the outside so what is the home place of sodium ion outside outside means ecf what is the home place of potassium ion inside what is the, the, the inside axoplasm okay so just just keep that uh, in mind let me read the text for you so this is about uh, the sodium potassium atp pump there you can see the sodium potassium ions diffuse inwards and outwards respectively to understand this sentence that we need to pay the effort sodium and potassium ions diffuse inwards and outwards respectively down their concentration gradient through leakage channel such the movement of ions if unchecked would eventually disturb the resting membrane potential till the time what we say sodium is moving inward potassium moving outward respectively down their concentration gradient then through leakage channel such a movement of ions if we don't check them would eventually disturb the resting membrane potential okay so what we need to do we need to bring them back again these flow of ions offset by sodium potassium pump if we ask do, will they go no we need to use energy that energy that energy only we are talking from the beginning so we need to use energy to bring it the resting status again that we say that as sodium potassium atp pump sodium potassium atp pump why i am using this word atp pump because that is happen with the help of uh, that energy by using energy sodium potassium atp is just present in the axonal valve they are pumping they are expelling three sodium ions for each two potassium ions imported so these pumps are expel expel means going out means sodium home is out only that means in ecf 
So for every three sodium ions we are pumping outside, two potassium ions are getting imported. As these pumps remove more positive charges from the exoplasm, then they bring into it. What is the meaning of this? As these pumps remove more positive charges, that means what is the resting state is? Negative charge, minus 70 millivolts, isn't it? So when you do like this, when you send the sodium home, when you send the potassium home, home means sodium should go out. Potassium should come in. Out means ECF. In means exoplasm. They contribute to the negativity of the resting membrane potential. That means talking about sodium potassium ATP pump, they are contributing uh, that uh, resting membrane potential. That you people need to understand. That little complex, but if you understand the original position, that is very easy to understand. That is easy, very easy to remember. Okay. Exclusively about sodium potassium ATP pump. We have a video. Just watch the video, then after we'll discuss. Potassium pump is an active transport mechanism. Three sodium ions bind to the protein channel, and an ATP provides the energy to change the shape of the channel that in turn drives the ions through the channel. One phosphate group from the ATP remains bound with the channel. The sodium ions are released on the other side of the membrane outside of the cell, and the new shape of the channel has a high affinity for potassium ions, and two of these ions now bind to the channel. This binding again causes a change in the shape of the protein channel, and this conformational change releases the phosphate group on the cytoplasm side. This release allows the channel to revert to its original shape, and as a result, the potassium ions are released inside the cell. In its original shape, the channel has a high affinity for sodium ions, and when these ions bind again, they initiate another cycle. The important characteristic of this pump is that both sodium and potassium ions are moving from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration. That is to say, each ion is moving against its concentration gradient. This type of movement can only be achieved by the constant expenditure of ATP energy. So, I think uh, able to understand the concept here. The sodium potassium pump so. is an active transport mechanism. So first of all, we need to understand what is outside, what is inside, what is outside and inside. Outside means ECF. If people need to understand outside, the meaning of outside is ECF, extracellular fluid. And this is axial lemma. So let me change the color. This is axial lemma. And this is, uh, what do you call, axoplasm. Okay, so this situation is after the war. That means after depolarization and repolarization. During that, actually sodium ions are more in the ECF. Actually sodium ions are more in the ECF. And resting status I am talking about. Potassium ions are more in axoplasm. Potassium ions are more in axoplasm. But what happened? There is an influx of sodium ion which makes the charge increase. Sodium with separate gates. Gates we have seen yesterday. Sodium inactivation gates, activation gates, that all we have seen yesterday. Okay, so then efflux of potassium ion is to decrease the charge. Whatever it may be, whenever I gave the stimulation, when the stimulation is happened, when the stimulation is happened, so due to my stimulation that uh, there are influx of sodium ion, charge increase, that means uh, reaching from minus 70 to the minus 55 to the plus 45 this is due to the influx of sodium ion plus 45 to the minus 70 to the minus 90 this is because of efflux of potassium ion isn't it efflux of potassium ion so whatever that during this particular process there is an influx of sodium ion and there is an efflux of potassium ion that means sodium from outside to inside they went over. Potassium from inside to outside they went over. What is required for us? We require their respective positions again. For that, every three sodium ions which they go outside, potassium ions should come inside. That is by using 
energy that is by using energy that we need to understand that should you see here this is atp energy atp atp is enzyme that atp is enzyme will break into adp plus phosphate ion that phosphate ion uses makes the sodium to expel out the three sodium ions reach it to their respective place so then the two potassium ions from ecf to the axoplasm they came from ecf to the axoplasm do remember this particular process requires some energy we require some energy interesting thing here all these are going to occur in the fraction of milliseconds fraction of milliseconds only that we are going to discuss actually today refractory period that to understand the gap between the nerve impulse from first and second okay so whatever it may be we send sodium out and we send potassium in that we call it as resting status we say that as resting status to bring it toward the resting status we paid effort that to be remembered over that to be remembered over we send sodium outside and we send potassium inside we send the sodium outside and potassium inside finally resting state is happening okay so that you people need to remember and then after then after we have to discuss about the refractory period okay let us start refractory period 